So today we will talk about uh, the two remaining views that uh, we plan to talk yesterday. Today we will talk Now, <coughs> these two are very difficult. So they will face some quinine. Actually, uh, out of the four truths, um, the first truth um, that we, we discussed yesterday, that all come out of things are impermanent, all emotions coming from ego, uh, pain, these two are actually relative truths. Uh, uh, so uh, truth. And this two remaining are what we call ultimate truth. Ultimate truth, as Professor Schaff was saying um, yesterday, the moment I speak, I have failed. Even in the Buddhist scripture, we have found sayings like, in order to express the ultimate truth, even the mouth of the Buddha is not good enough. But you see, the thing is this, even to say that ultimate truth cannot be expressed is already an expression. Remember yesterday we talked about to make some, uh, you know, we have, in order to lure us, to the right view, um, as a technique of teaching, we have to make the truth attractive. This true truth, very difficult to make it attractive for the human mind. Especially the third one, or, or uh, everything is emptiness. Not attractive at all. Um, the last one, the Nirvana, for centuries we have. Uh, I mean, Buddhists have uh, tried to make it very attractive, and actually, it has sort of worked. Western land, the lotus blooming, and you will come out from the lotus start and all that. A nirvana, a very happy place forever, your computer does not need to be updated, all this kind of thing. But the second, the third one, the emptiness, is really difficult to discuss. But yet, it is the most important. I would say out of these four, the third is most important. For centuries, masters, saints, scholars have tried to present this. They sang songs about it. I mean, if you go to Tibetan monasteries, they even painted emptiness. Uh, 
I don't know whether any of you have ever seen a blue naked Buddha. So we can look at the Chinese blue naked body of the Buddha. No ornaments. 完全没有装饰庄严。Representing the emptiness. 代表空性。And the color blue representing the sky. You know the sky color again closer to the emptiness. 蓝色代表是空，天空的蓝色也代表这个空性。Uh, keep remembering, as I said yesterday, all these tools are just tools. 记得某些，大家记得某些，昨天讲所有这些工具都只是工具。They are not the actual truth. 他们不是真正的真理。And I I want to really emphasize this because many times we end up falling in love with. The tools. We must always emphasize this point because we often fall in love with these tools. And this is why I thought it's really uh, interesting and important what Professor Shaf was saying yesterday afternoon. So he thought that this is why Professor Shaf was saying yesterday afternoon. So he thought that this is why Professor Shaf was saying yesterday afternoon. So he thought that this is why Professor Shaf was saying yesterday afternoon. Because as Buddhism travels to different places. The technique, the tool has to change. Because in this faith spread to different places, the tool has to change. I mean, it's kind of shocking to realize one of the greatest, one of the great, big influence of Japanese Buddhism probably has a little bit of Christian influence. That's shocking. It's very shocking. I heard the Professor Shaf talking about this. In fact, it's one of the most important things in Japan. 佛教的传统竟然是有可能是有基督教的影响在里面。These are important for these are important for especially academic students to know, not necessarily by practitioner. 这特别对于研究佛法的这个学者一定要知道，不一定是修行人必须知道。Because with this information, we will be guarded from the misunderstandings. 因为有这样的讯息，我们就不会被错误的这个见解，呃，就可以免除于错误的见解。My translator Chris was telling me that in China, when Buddhism was introduced in the beginning, the what, um, even because of the begging bowl, the Chinese just couldn't really accept the whole Vinaya and Bhikshu kind of phenomena. As openly as in India. So then, I was telling him, I was telling him, so Buddhism came to China, this Tobo Chi, this concept, ah, the whole this 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 now in places like India, even today, even today, a life that is led with a begging wanderer, they call it the sannyasi, is considered a very good life. 可是，在印度呢，即使到今天，这种脱钵其实的这种游方的这种。这些修行者是被认为是最高的一种行为。It's a, it's a very honorable life. It's a very what they call a right livelihood. 是一个非常荣耀的一种生活。他们认为是正确的这个生活之道。See, different. You know, as you travel, it becomes different. In Tibet, if a monk wears blue, 在西藏如果僧人穿蓝色的衣服。The Tibetans will just condemn it. And this is funny because actually Buddha allowed monks to wear blue. But because the king, it is believed, it's believed that the king actually thought monks should only wear either red or yellow. That's why it became like that. 嗯，事实上是后来的国王认为和尚只能穿红色或者是黄色的袍子，后来变成这样子。And many times 
actually it becomes a little bit bad also, you know, things like this cultural influence. Like Tibetan Mahayana Tibetan Buddhist are supposedly Mahayana Buddhist. They shouldn't really eat meat. But okay, in Tibet maybe nothing grows, so they can eat meat. But when, but when they are in places like Beijing, so many vegetables. So they should really try to eat vegetables. But they still say, oh, you know, we, we, you know, we And then of course they bring the tantric excuses also. So, oh, we are tantric practitioners, we can eat meat, wine, all of this. So it, it you know, this is important for academic, you know, academically it's really important for the students here to know these things. Okay, now just want to have a and also you know also it's the um, what do you call it? I think the habit, habit. Let me tease you a little bit. This habit of 
needing something there. 这个习惯, 这种需要有一个什么东西在那里, Very difficult to break. So much so that even the Buddha indicated many times in many other sutras like Langa Avatara Sutra, Buddha nature. Which is very much prevailing in China, isn't it? The Buddha nature concept. I think Xuan Zhang, he likes this. Also, all my Chinese friends, they love Buddha nature. Did I say? Again, common sense is moving here. <coughs> yeah, common sense. <coughs> you, if you do something, you, there has to have a beginning point. So, good nature is good. <coughs> now, the Nagarjuna people, like the Indians, <coughs> they say nothing's there. <coughs> then, if you ask, Okay, what well, Buddha said about Buddha nature, what is that? They conveniently say, Buddha nature is a name given to what they call the result of elimination. Eliminate. Okay, you eliminate this, 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 and then the result, the effort. And then actually, even Nagarjuna said, and that is wonderful, he says. Because of that, you can put it like this, this everything, you can put everything. Going back to the beauty and ugly. If your boyfriend is really ugly, really ugly, the others will never find him beautiful. Because the ugliness is the truth. And that space is occupied by ugliness. And not only about other people, even you yourself. You know, in the evening you find with the candlelight you find your boyfriend good looking. And in the morning when you wake up, So see, change there is. So you can do This change cannot take place if the ugly really does exist outside. So you can be a person So these are the probably the best thing I could do to really talk emptiness on a very lay person's language. But, thanks. Even though it is something not expressible, uh, it is something that can be experienced. Through examples, leads. Okay, there are three three ways to ex uh, what, um, experience this. Okay, they have a hierarchy. The lowest example, like a dream, like a magic. You know, at the end of the Diamond Sutra, that's the, that's the lowest way. And then the higher way, reasoning. Which we talked earlier, like the beauty and ugly and all that. And that's probably what Mahayana people do mostly. 
那这个大概就是一般的大圣佛教的修行者做的事情。那或者 ，some Mahayana and specially Vajrayana， 对于有一些大圣的修行者，而且特别是这个密圣来说 ，then this say there is a if you have a master who can point out the direct experience of this emptiness, that's the best way. 他们说，如果你有一位上师可以直接的指出那个经验的话，那这是最好的办法。And this can come in the form of many things. I think the Zen people have something called koan. 这个有很多方法来呃发生，在像禅宗里面也谈到这样公案。Anyway, conclusion: what you see or how it appears is not what it is. That's what it is for now. 结论，以目前为止，空性的定义就是说，你看到的或者是他所显现的，不是他真正的样子。Next is nirvana。那再来是谈到涅槃。Okay, nirvana is the fourth truth now。涅槃现在是谈到第四个见地。Now nirvana in our head, nirvana is something like something that you will get it after long, long time. 涅槃在我们心里里面是我们在很久以后会获得的一个东西。Like、uh, something like heaven， 类似像天堂一样的东西。That's not a good understanding of nirvana。这是对涅槃不好的这种理解。Because Buddha himself said， 涅槃的涅槃的希望哦，不，呃， nirvana is peace， or nirvana is、uh, beyond extreme。我我自己说，这个涅槃极静，或者是说涅槃是离于极端的。OK， 啊，涅槃呢 ？When all extreme is exhausted, then that's an experience of nirvana. 当所有的极端都是都耗尽的时候，那个就是涅槃的经验。Now, mm, you know, even in our ordinary experience, you know, one could sort of, okay, give you an example. Yes, yes, okay, please. This is from the Samadhi Raja Sutra, the Sutra of King of Meditation. King of Meditation. This is a very famous one. I don't know if you know it. He said, if a, a girl dreams, a girl who is longing for a child, 如果有一位女士，她很想生个小孩，然后她在做梦。She dreams that she actually gets a, has a conception, pregnant. 那她梦见她怀孕。And give birth. 然后生了小孩。You know, she's very happy. 她非常开心。And in the same dream, the child dies. 但是同样的梦里面，那个小孩死掉了。She's unhappy. 然后她不开心。Okay, when he, she wakes up, both that happiness and unhappiness has no reference. Both of them do not exist. She is free from these two extremes. Yeah. So, um, but this is difficult. As I said before, again, we have Painted lot of lofty pictures like flowers, western land, and all that. 可是这个很难的。我们有我们对涅槃有画了很多画像，比如说极乐世界的莲花。They're very important, though. We need them. 这是非常需重要的。我们需要这些。阿弥陀佛，这段 has amazing descriptions about lotus land. 阿弥陀佛经里面对于这个呃莲花净土有非常详细的描述。Okay, I always give this example. I will give you this now. Now, if you are asking me, if you are asking me, this man, 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 轮回来帮助众生，不是这些事情。Because I want to watch the world come。因为他想看世界杯足球赛。And enjoy。然后很开心的这样去看。Because I want to uh read uh suspense books。他想看这。
这个呃侦探小说 ，mystery movies， 啊啦，神秘的电影，那个怪异片。You see what happens when you get in a room？ 因为如果你震怒的话，有什么事情会发生 ？There's no time， 没有时间。Extreme of time is gone， 时间这个极端不在了。There's no past, no present, no future. 没有过去，有现在，未来。Which also actually means omniscience. Omniscience. 这代也就代表全知。So, whole next World Cup, everything dissolves. The players are not in the same state. 所以下一届的足球杯，所有的结果，当下就知道了。So what's the fun? 没有什么好玩的。If you watch you watch a mystery movie, 如果你看那种神秘的电影 ，you know what will happen right right away, right from the beginning. Even you don't even have to watch the movie. 你从开始就知道结尾，甚至你不用看就知道。So, you know, no fun again. 不好玩。So what I want to say is, usually we are looking for an enlightenment that is partially omniscience. 通常我们在找的这个证物呢，是部分全知。Like you know enough, like reading your, you know, lover's diary, you know, out of clear points like that. 就是够就好了。我们常常会希望就是，比如说我们用全知或者这种神通来看到这个情人的日记里面写什么。I'm telling you this because I want to give. Paint a picture of enlightenment beyond time and beyond space. 我们在讲这些是希望它可以描绘出一个超越时间、超越空间的涅槃是什么东西。Now I don't want you to think, wow, this is just beyond me. You know, how can I reach that? 我们也不希望大家想说，哇，这怎么可能？这超过我的能力，我怎么可能变这样子 ？You should not discourage like this. This is doable. 你不许，你不意外，你不应该这样子失望。这是做得到。If you can really pursue the path， 如果你真正能够循这个道而走 ，Let's say I'm a few minutes of meditation every day, training the mind every day。比如说每天呃，禅坐几分钟，常常休息，每天休息。Now, if you you know, I like to really mention this, people. People always go, oh, then I have bodily sensations. Maybe I have a little bit of itchy on my forehead. Maybe the third eye is about to burst out. I have a good dream. Those are really, please don't speak like that because it's a disgrace. It's not good. 我们就说特别一定要讲这个，因为如果你这样做的话，很多人喜欢谈说，哦，我有一种特别的觉受啊，我这个地方开始痒起来，是不是第三眼开始要长出来了？或者是我有什么样的这个感受，那么就是拜托，不要谈这些，谈这些是很羞耻，不高雅。The result of practice， 以后，啊，修行的结果 ，is when you begin to have a little bit of shift， 是当你开始有某种一点点这个转移。Let's say you are someone who gets so， you know， stuffed up。When somebody is praising you, 假设说你是那种人，如果有一点点赞誉，你就会鼓起来那种人。Or get ready to press if someone criticizes you a little bit. 或者是那种人家批评一点点，你就会非常沮丧那种人。Let's say after a few years of meditation, you don't have much that kind of hang up. 那我们假设说，经过几年的这个禅坐修行以后，你开始对这些东西没有什么感觉了，无所谓。That is amazing. 这是非常殊胜的，非常棒的。That is equal to Ushnisha, the tip of the Buddha's head. 这等等同于佛头顶上的顶基。I mean, even the small obsessions. 即使是这种小小的执着。Let's say you are someone who needs to iron your underwear every night. 比如说你是那种每天晚上都要熨平你的内衣的那种人。Because you are so obsessed with cleanliness and you know crispiness. Yeah, you just 那种喜欢那种很脆、很干净那种洁癖嘛。But after years of meditation, you know, it just doesn't matter. Maybe you are just man, not washed for two years. 
，经过几年的禅修以后呢，也许你就无所谓了，说不定你那一两年都不死。安徽省，省，安徽省一座 small town 的大城，目前会说这是一种小局面的涅槃。<笑>
多基础圣跟很多大圣呢，都不相信金刚圣是佛教。They think it's a Hindu. 他们认为他们是印度教。And especially in, especially Japanese Vajrayana Buddhism is uh, under scrutiny of many scholars, and rightfully so. 特别是藏传佛教，在很多学者。呃，的眼光底下都非常被批判、怀疑，呃，而且人们就认为是也应该如此。Because you know, I, I forgot the name of this master, but the Tibetan master who was going to India on the way in Nepal, an Indian Hindu master is going inside Tibet. They met on the road. 呃，我们先忘记这位大师的名字是什么。不过，当有一位印度的大师，呃，要去西藏，在尼泊尔的时候碰到一位印度教的大师，从西藏出来。印印度吗？是吧？呃 ，no， 我印印度的这个，这个是嘛？这个是嘛？是关于啊，对不起，我讲反，是因为藏传大师要去印度，碰到一位印度教的大师要进西藏。When the Tibetan master asked him, "Oh, Joe, where are you going?" I said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian master said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian master said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian master said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian master said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian master said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian master said, "Oh, I'm going to Tibet to teach Buddhism." So this Tibetan master asked this Indian master, "Where are you going?" The Indian 那现在印度，呃，这个西藏非常热衷佛教，而且他给我们很多金子。We have stories like that too. 我们有这样子的故事。Another more interesting story. 另外一个更有趣的故事。Is Atisha Tikankara. 那阿底峡尊者。When he heard Netipa died in India. 当他听到这个 Netipa 或者什么翻译在印度原籍了。He cried. 他哭哭泣。And his disciple. You have so many bad news, but why you cry for this? He said, "In all this world, there is only two bad news. Why do you cry for this?" He said, "In all this world, there is only two men, two people, who can actually differentiate between Hindu tantra and Buddhist tantra." He said, "In all this world, there is only two men, two people, who can actually differentiate between Hindu tantra and Buddhist tantra." He said, "In all this world, there is only two men, two people, who can actually differentiate between Hindu tantra and Buddhist tantra." He said, "In all this world, there is only two men, two people, who can actually differentiate Died now in India. There is no who can differentiate. We are talking a thousand years ago, more than thousand years ago. We are talking about a thousand years ago. I like to just give you this. 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 And with this, I shall give you the
even while you are brushing your teeth. So that kind of retreat is the best, I think. And this is something everybody Was 
陶树总结我昨天想说的。My understanding of Buddhism is that there is no Buddhism outside of people, cultures, and times. Buddhism exists. Buddhism is not outside of people. So I gave a complicated example of how Japanese, a certain form of modern Japanese Buddhism, has been influenced by Western thought and Christian thought. So I gave a very complicated example of how Japanese, a certain form of modern Japanese Buddhism, has been influenced by So you might think this shows that the Japanese and the Americans they don't really understand Buddhism. But remember that the Chinese uh, understanding of Buddhism was deeply influenced by Chinese culture, Chinese language, Chinese thought. And, and Tibetan Buddhism was influenced by Tibetan culture and Tibetan history. And Indian Buddhism was influenced by Indian thought and Indian history. So where is Buddhism in this? Where is true Buddhism or pure Buddhism? So you might think that the idea is to remove all of the cultural baggage and all of our uh, cultural heritage, and then we'll be able to see pure Buddhism. I think this is very much like trying to see emptiness out there, to get a hold of emptiness. So yesterday somebody asked me whether I believed in reincarnation. I didn't quite know how to answer at the time. But it was particularly poignant because just the night before Rinpoche and I and some others had a long conversation about uh, reincarnation and its place in Buddhism. So I'd like to, to give you, spend a moment and, and tell you why I find this question confusing and very interesting. When we think of or when you think, or when any of us think of reincarnation, we think of it happening, in a sense, outside of ourselves. We imagine ourselves from the outside being reborn, here or someplace else. So I was born in Canada. In the 20th century. And in the West today, I don't know about China, but in the West today, most people have what I would call a Cartesian way of thinking about the world. So Descartes was a philosopher, you may know him if only for one statement, I think, therefore I am. Descartes was actually a scientist, and he was interested and worried about the Christian Church's influence over science. The Christian Church thought that God and His creation, humankind, were at the very center of the universe. 
啊，基督教教会认为上帝从跟他创造的人是在这个宇宙的中心。And science challenged that because it no longer saw human beings as necessarily at the center of the world. 以科学挑战了这个假设，呃，也不把人放在这个宇宙的中心。And Descartes wanted a way to separate the realm of science from the realm of religion. 杰克尔常尝试把科学的范畴跟啊、呃、宗教的范畴分开。So what he said is there are two realms. One is the material universe out there. 他尝试说一个就是一个啊、呃、物质的是有呃的领域，就是有两个领域，一个就是物质的领域。This is a world that is known only indirectly through the senses. 这个是一个呃，只能通过我们的感感受、感官来啊，经验到的一个世界。It is a world governed by unchangeable mechanical laws. 这个是一个受不可转变的呃机械性的呃规律所统呃主宰的一个时的一个宇宙。It's a dead world. There's no consciousness in the material world. 这是一个死的世界，里面没有意识的。The world of consciousness is the immaterial world, the world of spirit. 在呃，与意识的世界呢，是一个非物质的世界，是精神的。It's it's the world of re, it's the proper domain of religious teachings. Religious teachings pertain to the spiritual world, not the material world. 这就是呃，佛教的呃，主呃，最妥当的主呃，领域，就是呃，宗呃，宗宗教堂。呃，宗教的领域是谈非物质的，是精神的世界。So this division into two different dimensions or two different realms is so pervasive in the Western world today that it's hard to think our way outside of it. 这个呃分歧就是两个不同呃维度或两个不同的领域，这已经是说呃这么普遍了，已经很难再想象不是这样子。I honestly don't know how much influence this way of thinking has in China today. 我很呃，老实说，我也不知道中国这种思维现在有多啊，在中国有多啊普遍。But sometimes I think that materialism, the the uh the philosophy of materialism, which has had a profound impact in China, has some relationship with Cartesianism. 我有时候我想，这个唯物主义，呃，这个唯物主义有关的思想，在中国这么受，呃，这么普遍，可能也是有跟这个笛卡尔式的思维有关。Now, historically, this is very different from a Buddhist way of thinking. 历史上，这个思维是跟佛教的思维是有很大的差距。So, if you take, for example, the Shravakayana or the Theravada. 如果你啊、呃、看这个是声闻成或南传上座部的佛教 ，They believe that the object of consciousness and consciousness arise simultaneously and codependent on each other。他们认为意识的对象跟意识是同时产生的，或者完全是互相依赖的。So it makes no sense to talk about a material world apart from consciousness. Or a realm of consciousness apart from objects of consciousness. Or if you take yoga chala, they also believe that consciousness and its object arise simultaneously out of the alaya vijnana. 那他们也认为啊，这个意识跟意识的对象也是同时呃生成的 ，out of 啊，在在阿赖耶识里面同时出现。So you can't talk about a material world or an objective world apart from consciousness. 你不能啊，他单独的只谈一个客观的外在世界，你不同时兼顾这个意识。Or if you think of Madhyamika, 或你谈啊中观。Um, one very easy way of thinking of Madhyamika is there is no view outside of oneself. There's a Let me try this again. There is something that Western philosophers call the view from nowhere. Um, what? Um, this Chinese one of the one of the principles is actually, um, there is no outside view. 
This is the view of science. We attempt to stand outside of ourselves, outside of our consciousness, and describe the world the way it would seem to some higher being. This is a scientific view, which is leaving us the person, and then going to a person outside, and to see the world from the highest point of view. So the emptiness idea is that there is no view from nowhere. There is no place to stand outside of this moment, this time, who you are. Chinese, Indian, Japanese, Canadian. The空空性的观念就是说，没有外在的一个另外一个点去看这个事情，啊，在外在的啊地点或啊一个时间去看这个，所以由这样一个外层的观点。so when somebody asks, do I believe in reincarnation, I hear it as, do I believe in the six realms as set forth in the Buddhist scriptures? And I'm confused because I'm not too sure where the person asking thinks these six realms are. In other words, I believe that if you believe in the six realms and you believe in rebirth, that's reality. That's as real as, as this bottle of water or this table. That's what my understanding of conventional reality is. There were people who meditated, did long retreats by themselves or with groups out in the forest. And there were scholars who spent much of their time studying books and writing commentaries. And historically, there's always been, or not always, but often there was tension between those two groups. And yet they both were interdependent, they, they both depended on, depended on each other. In fact, one of the in the Theravada world, the most authoritative text on meditation was written by a fifth-century monk, Buddha Gosa. And Buddha Gosa wrote a text called uh, the Vasudhi Maga. Buddha Gosa says in the introduction to his text that he was not, he is not a meditator, and nothing in the text is based on his own experience. And yet this has become the most authoritative guide to meditation in the Theravada world. So I think there's room for all types. I think uh, I'll end there. And
arrived in China, he went and sat in a cave for nine years old.